So growing up, my father was was really good at budgeting. He was able to, to set funds aside for for vacations, bills, um, repairs. You know, uh, he he was good at putting his money in places where it was needed, um, and just not letting it uh, go to waste or, or spending it um, on things that that weren't uh, really needed for our family. Uh, and and he had tried teaching me a couple times um, with budgeting. I know whenever I had questions, I, I'd go to him regarding um, uh, how to um, budget properly, uh, which is great. You know, I, I, I needed that as a, as a kid. I needed even more as an adult, um, learning the importance of managing the money that I get so I'm able to provide for my family as well. Um, I do wish that that I could uh, go back in time and pick his brain some more uh, regarding finances towards the uh, end of his life. Um, this was a, a year ago, uh, maybe just a little over a year ago. Um, we discussed stocks. I had never gotten involved in, in the stock market until about the last year. And I wish that I had been able to pick his brain more and, and learned as to how he got into it and how um, uh, to manage my funds uh, in the stock market. But anyways, the, the reason why I'm talking about this is because my guest today, Eric Schiller, uh, works for Northwestern Mutual. Uh, he is not only uh, someone that, that I feel comfortable talking to about uh, financial decisions, but also uh, just a really good friend, a really good guy, great father, great husband, just all around and an awesome dude. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't want to hold you up any further. I do want to let you know uh, at the end of this episode, it gets cut off. Um, unfortunately, uh, we had some recording uh, issues, uh, but it was at the very end, uh, right before he was going to um, let everybody know where they could contact him. So be sure to stick around at the very end, right when the interview cuts off, so you can find out where you can get a hold of Eric and ask uh, ask him your financial questions. All right, let's go ahead and get into this episode of ParaQuest. We just I just put the girls down, and uh, remember how I told you that we started to uh, like put fee down like by yourself, like you know. So today. I was like kind of in a hurry, like, cause we had this and just cause of time and everything. Right. So I was like, all right, fee, let's lay, we'll lay down me and you, I'll put some, we'll put, we put Keenan melodies on and you know, that's like our routine. And I had these restrooms. So I like looked over and I'm like, is she asleep? Is she awake? Like, I'm like, I'm like doing this, like looking in her, in her face for a second <laughs> And then I went to our bathroom, which is connected to the master and use the bathroom, flush the toilet, like, you know, yeah. Uh, what do you normally do when you use the bathroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Normal stuff. And then like Shy had just put Georgie down, came and put her down. And then I came outside, put on, put on this hoodie, sat down and then Fee just walks out of our door. Like, oh, I can't go to, I can't sleep. I'm like, yes, you can. You know how to go to sleep. Yeah. It is okay. You are all okay. I said, your sister's in there. You need to go back in and go to sleep. And she's like, no, I don't want to. I'm like, we don't have options. And yeah. she was like, okay, okay. And she was fine. So, so Georgie sleeps in there with her too, right? So this is actually Fee's room. Okay. She's so trying to sleep we, in there right now. No, no, no. Just <laughs> um, no, that would be funny though. Uh, no, so normally I put fee down in here. She goes out 20 minutes, she's pretty good. When she goes to bed by herself, I don't know how long it takes her to fall asleep, probably like 15 minutes, and then she's she's pretty good. She goes, um, she goes out and then we leave both doors open. We leave the mat, our, our, our door open and fees door. So between like five and seven, she'll get up and come in our bed and cuddle, fall back. Asleep. With 
Yeah. 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 And then Georgie still sleeps with us. Yeah. You know, she just turned a year, so she still sleeps with us. Um, and then you guys have round three coming. Right. Round three. Round yeah. Three. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's yeah, that's exciting. I don't know what we're gonna do with Georgie when the baby comes. You guys have made an announcement, right? It's public. Yeah, it's public. Okay. Yeah, sure. it's public. No, 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 it's public. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Um, yeah, it's public. So it's um yeah, but you know, our friends and family know, and you know, yeah, so that but yeah, no, we're, we're excited. Public. I don't know what we're gonna do with putting the other one in there, you know, like I don't know if I could do what you do. Well, I have a <laughs> I have a bed attached to our bed. So it's kind of like, especially for work nights, it's nice because I have to wake up super early in the morning and they all stay asleep. Um, I it's yeah, it's hard sometimes. So it's, uh, yeah. it's like, a, it's, I guess it's bigger than a California King. I guess it's a King and a twin put together. And so is the twin, the twins, not as long as the King though. Right. They're both. Yeah. It's the same length. It's the same length. Yeah. It's just narrow. Um, yeah, but it's the I same mean, level. Mm, it's about an inch less, not much difference, but <laughs> so you sleep, but I'm, like, I'm like, over normally, especially during like, like work nights. I'm there by my, by myself just because yeah. uh, she puts them to bed. And I, Bo w- would let me put her to sleep. She was pretty good about letting me put it, put her to sleep. Rue will never let me put her to sleep. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we're pretty good buddies during the day, but at nighttime, she she wants mommy. So that was like, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but like, so I got married to Shy when Fee was two. Me and Fee, buddies all the time. Right. Same thing. Like, no problem. Like, buddies, no deal. Like, you know, Shy would work two twelves, and I would have on those two twelves. I would have fee all day. You know, so I was used to it. You know, but you know, nap time was kind of hard for her to be put to sleep by me, because um, we've always had like nap times, and that would fluctuate through the day. Nap yeah. times and then bedtime was always like a ballpark area of time when they were allotted to sleep. So. Yeah, no way. She didn't want me. Never. She didn't want me at all. So it was like kind of a similar situation, but I kept trying and we had this like thing where I would put her to bed with Shy next to me. So it was like she knew that Shy was there. Uh-huh. And then it, you know that would that would be okay for her, like she would be okay, but that took a little while being like the sole parent that that does not put the baby to sleep like for me there's like a baggage of guilt that comes along with that cuz you, know, you try you try to do it but then it just doesn't and and we tried like as, as for me especially like I've tried with her multiple times and it gets to the point where she's crying and crying and just doesn't want me to rock her to sleep and uh I think it just stresses everybody out more than it does do any good at all it's, so, uh, so Kyle, let me ask you: How did you grow up? How, what do you mean? What were, what were your parents like? Theories on like discipline oh, or man. like going to bed by yourself oh, with mom, dude. with dad and mom? Like, because that shapes who we are is when we grew up to be parents. That's you know? true. That's true. I have a lot to say. Like, well, okay, so. Uh, I I had nights where I did go to bed crying. Um, I, you know, being at you know, five years of age, I don't remember a whole lot. Um, yeah. I did sleep in my own bed. I slept. I had slept in the same room with my brother, so I had him in there with me. He's older. He's seven years older than me. Oh wow! And, okay. Uh, uh, so we shared a room together. We shared bunk beds. Um, there were nights where I got in trouble and I get sent to my bedroom, and I would be upset, so I would cry because I wouldn't want to go to bed yet, but. Um, I think a lot growing up, my dad traveled for work and nights when he was gone, I would sleep in the bed with mom. 
and she would be all right with it. But I, I have my own bedroom. I have my own bed. Um, I don't think it was very strict that I had to sleep in there from what I remember. And, and the nights that I went to bed crying, probably like more preteen years, like, I don't know, not preteen, but like, you know, like nine, 10. Um, I wanted to stay up and play video games, but I got sent to bed because I did something stupid. I mean, yeah, that's that. That's how that's how I remember it. I'm sure they would say something a little different. But what about I mean, what about you? So <clears throat> what was nice, I always appreciated bedtime was never a discipline thing for my family. So like bedtime was always around the same time. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter what like what I did. Like it was always same ballpark time. So like I knew everyone like, in your was, family. Sorry. Everyone would go to the go to bed at the same time with, in your family. No. Okay. Okay. No, my, me and my brother, me and my okay. brother. So my brother's two years younger than me and we had bedrooms right next to each other. And, um, so it was just like, you know, in the like adolescent years, it was like mom and dad would come tuck us in. Like they didn't really rock us. Not that I can remember. I don't remember being like two or three, but like my mom tells me that like, she was really good about like, getting us in our own space so we could sleep knowing we're safe by ourselves. That was really important to her. Um, Cause obviously she didn't want to have like abandonment issues, like right. leaving your kid and running away to your own bedroom or in the living room or whatever. But like we grew up and it was, it was, that was the thing. Like we just knew like bedtime. Okay. Yeah. Talk, good night. Love you. You know, we had our little bedtime routine, but when we got into our like, preteen years it was like what could i get away with inside my room that mom and dad wouldn't know about <laughs> play so a game boy under the covers late. Yeah, yeah like super late like i had a tv at the end of the bed i'd play xbox <laughs> and i like i had a <laughs> i had a little surge protector and it was right by my like on my bed like between my bed and my wall and i would go like hit it and like in like your sleep out. yeah 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 um but yeah, no, I, yeah, no, it was, we slept by ourselves and I don't ever remember being in my parents' bed. Like, like my mom was a very cuddly, affectionate person. My dad, he was to a degree, but he didn't grow up that way. So it was like, even as a kid, I could tell it was awkward for him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can relate to that. That's kind of how my parents were too. Mom was the more like snuggle on me kind of parent my dad was um not snuggly cuddly but affectionate in his own way yeah 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 i learned that as i got older too like how my dad expressed you know that same kind of affection you find yourself doing it the same way opposite opposite the okay. opposite you picked yeah. up your mom's habits Well, not even necessarily just my mom's habits. I tried to take, I tried to like really like everyone talks about breaking the cycle. Mm -hmm. So like I tried to break the cycle with like the things that my mom did and the things that my dad did that I liked, I took from both and the things that I like knew weren't going to work or didn't work on me. I was like, I'm not going to do that. But that wasn't that many things. Like I think I had good, good parents, you know? Right. So. That's why I was curious about how you grew up because, you know, shy, my wife, shy, she could like totally have our kids in bed with us all the time at first. And then now that we had the babe, Georgie, and now we have one more coming because we have Fee already. Right. She's like, no, we can't do this. They got to right. be in their own bed. They got to like, they got to share a room. Like, you know, no, you I mean, I, I'm not going to say one is one is enough as far as sharing the bed with two is it's a lot, man. We we went on vacation recently to well down your way. And uh, we had, we had to share two twin beds pushed together <laughs> with all four of us. <laughs> and that was, did you get fun. any sleep? <laughs> I, it was the worst sleep that we have had in a while. Ooh. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, but we managed, you know, we got a pillow topper to, for the week and then we took it back. 
Um, you used it and then returned it. it yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We t- we, got from, we got it from Target and then we took it back. It wasn't even that good of one, honestly. It was uh, it was like a down comfort on top of it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot. So we're we are in the process of trying to figure out um, how are we going to get Bo into the stages of sleeping um, in the room by herself and her bedroom's on the floor above us. So we're, we're in the process of getting our bedroom up there with them. So they're across the hall from us and it will, it'll be a little more, it'll be easier and they'll be more comfortable with somebody up there too. Yeah. Yeah. Which it's funny talking about sleeping in, in beds because growing up. So out of, out of kind of going into my teenage years, we always slept in uh, when we slept at a buddy's house in, in Waverly, we had dedicated this room in his basement called the super bedroom. And all it was, was a bunch of mattresses on the floor. It was a TV in the room with an N64 and a bunch of mattresses on the floor. And I think at any given time you could have like 10 guys sleeping in there and just, you know, all up all night playing games, drinking Mountain Dew and eating Doritos and hot pockets and stuff. But the, the thing that, that what's so funny is that you know if you woke up his his dad he was up above us if we we're being too loud and stuff three in the morning his dad would come walking out you could hear the footsteps going across the floor and we would hit that surge protector and shut everything off f- turn fan on full blast and just pretend that we were asleep and he knew that we weren't obviously i mean we 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 were causing ruckus upstairs and downstairs and he had to go to work at six in the morning. So I'm, I'm not looking forward to those days as a parent. I don't know. I guess maybe with girls, it might be a little easier because you're, you're a, what, what's the term called a dad girl now? Girl, dad, girl, dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll see oh, the number three. You know. true. But it'll happen. be solidified for, you know, it'll be, if it's a girl again and we have three, it'll be solidified. I'm a girl, dad, you know, you that too. Is, yeah. Yeah. Unless you're going to have another. Um, not right now. <laughs> not right now. Work on Bowie getting her own, her own sleeping area. Yeah. Yeah. Rue. We'll get her in her own little nook and then we'll get Rue in there and then we'll figure it out uh, at that point. But, um, you know, I, I, you, we had talked for a while about you coming on here and, and just chatting um, about life in general and, you are in the business of finances. Correct. Um, you are more, more, uh, I guess if I had any questions regarding finances, I would go to you about it. Um, but I wanted to ask you growing up um, with your family, were you educated on finances often? Was it something, you know, like, did you grow up, learning about taxes, savings, all that stuff. Was that something that was big in your family uh, for you? It was. Okay. Um, So my dad is a very logical thinker. So in his mind, everything is calculated. Everything is saved. Um, He, you know, most people, he went to Bethel. And most people who go to Bethel, they get like a lot of help from their family financially. Well, they get a short, a small stipend. He didn't get anything from his family. And out of that stipend, he saved thousands of dollars over the course of seven years, which is like unheard of. He saved every penny. So my dad has always been a very good saver, which does not always make for a good investor. So savers are great. Cause you have the basics, the core knowledge to don't go outside your means and to put things away. Um, so my dad was always really good about that and taught us how to do that. Um, unfortunately for me, when I was younger, I was very good at making money. I've always been a hard worker. I've always been self-proclaimed intelligent. Like I've tried to work and work smart and get things done. So I've always made good money but I always spent a lot of it. Mm -hmm. I invested a lot of money and used that, leveraged that to make moves and do things. Um, 
So it was really my dad. He taught me a lot about finance, um, specifically compound interest and what that means. Um, to If something, if an investment gets you 5% a year, he knew that over 10 years, you're going to get a lot back. So he actually gave me a little bit of money. Um, he gave me and my brother a little bit of money when we were 12 and 10. My brother was 10 years old when he first got involved in the stock market. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was 10 years old. I was 12. And my grandma gave us a little bit of money. And we grew that and grew that and made really odd decisions. Um, do you do you I don't I don't endorse this person. But do you know who Howard Stern is? Yeah. So Howard Stern, when he made the move from um, broadcast radio to XM, mm -hmm. I knew what that was going to mean. So actually it was Sirius satellite radio at the time I bought stock in Sirius the day he announced he was going to go stock skyrocketed, but what ended up happening over the next few years, every big automobile ma manufacturer put XM and Sirius satellite radio in the cars. Right. So I was like, that was like, I made big. tons of, you know, yeah. it wasn't, it was a lot of money for my little investment. Um, but I knew bigger picture, okay, this is going to do really well because of these reasons. Mm -hmm. And for that, I've always been, I've never been scared about um, making financial decisions because I knew if I followed a sound practice or a sound way of doing things that I could count on success in that area. Um, so that's what that taught me really was to look at, look at things and look at what would make a good decision long-term and then decide whether to put my money or time, you know, cause you either have time or money, you know, if you're broke, you know, you either have time or money basically. Right. Right. Except you're in a trust fund and you have both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't realize, um, my dad was pretty good at, at talking about like budgeting and planning out, you know, how you're going to pay for this bill and that bill and whatnot and having a strict budget. He was, he was very good. He didn't tell me anything about investing in the stock market until the month, until the month before he passed away. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that he had any investments in it at all. Um, you know, he talked 401k and all that stuff, but um, we were sitting out, by the beach just talking and he was telling me that he was investing in different companies and stuff. And I, you know, I didn't really care. I always thought it was something that my grandfather just kind of kept up with and talked about, but I never really cared until he started talking to me about it. And I started diving into it, which leads me into thinking like, okay, so where does that put me with my kids? Like how, like, I don't know if you have a, a way of, teaching your kids uh, how to responsibly handle money or if there's anything that you're practicing right now, or if you have plans in the future for it. Well, something that I think about with my girls is when I want them to be educated on the world around them. So I know that if they're content with the things that they have, they'll, for the most part, they'll be okay because let's the difference between someone who makes $20 an hour and someone who makes $200 an hour could just be the job they have. You know what I mean? But both those people, if they're not content with what they have, you know, the toys they have or the, the things that they have, the clothes they have, whatever it is, the ice cream they had for that week, whatever, if they, um, if they don't keep content with that, it will get, it will be a constant chase mm -hmm. and grab. So that's the first thing I'm trying to yeah. teach them is like, look, okay, we have this, this is, these are the circumstances. We can't really change the circumstances. So let's, let's get used to it. Let's get used to the, the two bedroom apartment. Let's get used mm -hmm. to the, the 2000 square foot house. Let's get used to a 10 year old car, you know, and that more so maybe for my wife and I, but you know, let's get used to having only these toys, you know, let's take care of them. When's the last time we cleaned all the toys, right? When's the last time we went through and go, how long ago did I use this? So that's the first thing I'm trying to teach them. The second thing is just understanding that things cost money, you know, 
everything, everything costs money. And that's, that's an ongoing struggle that if you're talking about teaching a four-year-old, the concept of a mortgage or utility bills, right. or when you go to McDonald's, those fries cost $2, you know, it's just, you, I'm trying to teach them that. So that, I guess that's probably where I fit finance into their lives. Um, and I think that comes from if mom and dad, if shy and I are on the same page about what we're going to do. And cause there's been times where we could have bought something that would have, they girls would have loved, but it either was maybe a little too, bit too pricey at the time, or we just didn't have room for it. Right. That's, and a, you go, that's okay, we don't, yeah. you know, we don't have, we just don't have the room. I'm sorry, honey. You know, yeah. and recently we had an anniversary and a bunch of our friends got the girls gifts. Mm -hmm. So the girls got like a ton of gifts and toys. And so we told them like, Hey, when we get a new toy, we've got to go through and get an old toy and, and donate it. I do my t-shirts, give, give it to somebody else, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, I think our four-year-old has started to understand that, you know, like you can't just accumulate things you have to take care of things and, and move forward Yeah, you know, with what you've got. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's probably the great thing to, to teach her too, especially to um, let's say like not get so attached to everything that you have um, because eventually that stuff is just going to go away. It could, it could be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Your apartment could burn down. Yeah. You know, your neighbor's house could catch on fire and, your shed's gone. Yeah. You know, you know that's, that's, that's great advice. Cause I, I honestly was thinking probably your answer was going to be something like, well, we got them a piggy bank and you know, they collect allowances every so often, but the fact that teaching them um, uh, to take care of the stuff that they have now, I mean, that, that definitely plays a big role in your finances and knowing that, that you um, uh, there's times when you just, you know, either you just can't afford what, what it is that you want to get, or the fact that, if you can't afford it, there's just not room for it. I mean, that's um, definitely, definitely important teacher kids. Something that I never really thought about, Eric. <laughs> well, I, and I will say that came from my dad. My mom didn't really care with those things of life. My dad was very, like, even early on taught us, like, the things that you have are yours. They are your responsibility. You know, so like our house was our responsibility. It wasn't my dad's responsibility. It was all of us, like our responsibility to take care of. So for, for me, it was, it was very almost, I don't know, it was very heart. It was a heart touching moment when I knew that the things that he taught me, I was teaching my kids and it worked. Yeah. Like I was like, man, I knew he was right though all those years. And I, Obviously I did them when I was an adult, but now I have kids and I'm seeing them do it, you know, like, and then it's like, really like, you know, so that's, it's, it is kind of nice when you go to Walmart and you have a cart and your kid sees a toy and you ask them like, well, you have $3 to spend here. That will be all your $3. Do you yeah. want to spend it on this or something else? And they're like, yeah, you're right. I guess I have to choose priorities. I can't have everything, you know, yeah. and it makes them so much like when they do that in their mind, it makes them, it just like when they make choices and then act on those choices, it like something fires off in their brain and they realize that they like, they can do this. Yeah. They can make a choice. That's a good choice that their parents say, no, that's a bad choice or whatever, or someone else or school teacher when they, when they put things in place and then they make a decision based off of that, and then they live it. I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool to see your kids like learn and their little brains yeah. react and, you know, yeah. I love your posts and I, I, all oh, the man. stuff like you see your kids do and say, and look up on, you know, like I haven't taught our kids how to look up Siri, but I'm Adult, scared to do that. Don't do it. It's the, the search history and YouTube is hilarious on our ipad it's just the things that her brain thinks of and and she vocalizes is, is so funny 
a little scary, but mostly funny. Yeah. For the most part. But yeah, whenever we, we were like literally just laying in bed, just watching TV and out of nowhere, Rue's asleep. And we just hear Siri, big people riding horses. (laughs) Why? Why? She looked up shark tornadoes, fire tornadoes. She's like, like all these natural disasters. She's very into natural disasters right now and has been since since she's found out there's a tornado siren in the little town that we live in. And so she she's always wondering when that little little siren's gonna go off. But have you have you seen the movie Twister? Oh yeah, it's been a while. I don't know if she could handle it right now. There's I mean, there might be a couple scenes where you might need to like, you know turn her head away and or muted or something but i growing up that was one of my favorite movies too. well i think growing up too we were we were more um i feel like watching movies like twister uh, independence day had a terrifying scene in it jurassic park i mean the first jurassic park was pretty much a horror movie yeah. uh, uh, and those were all movies that came out when we were kids yeah i, mean, I went to the theaters and watched them now, if those movies came out today, would I take my kids to the theater and watch it? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I just, I don't know. Although Bowie likes scary things. I don't know why. She's just into weird, like, clowns and just weird stuff. But, yeah, man, different times now than than when we grew up. I, have to, I, might, I might look up Twister and see if she'll be into it. I just, that scene where the guy gets his head hit by the hubcap or something starts bleeding like crazy. Yeah, I'll never forget that. And yeah, me like, either. They yeah. like go and put the hand on the thing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that would hurt. Like, yeah. I can imagine. Slice his head. Eric, thank you so much for hopping on. I would love to have you back on the podcast again in the near future. The near future. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you. I always bring good vibes. And uh, for you listeners, for you viewers, again, I apologize. The episode cut off uh, right there at the very end. Um, you can get a hold of Eric uh, just by going to ericschiller.nm. That's Nancy Mary NM.com. And Eric spells his name E R I C H S C H I L L E R. Ericschiller.nm.com. Uh, you can find me um, basically anywhere on on social media just type in parent quest uh, my account will come up and for you uh people that are viewing the podcast on youtube you can also listen to it on the go if you're not able to uh, watch it while you're driving or you're heading into work or you're running errands grocery shopping whatever go to your favorite podcast platform and you can find it there just by typing in parent quest if you go to anchor.fm you can find me there And there, you can do something very special. You can go to voice messages or messages, I believe it is now. You can leave me a voice message. I can play it here on the podcast. And I can discuss whatever questions you have, or if you just want to leave a nice message, also head on over to Apple uh, Podcasts. Please, please leave me a good review there. It helps out more than you realize. I greatly appreciate it. Um, So yeah, I think we're done. This has been an incredible episode, and I believe that I can say that this quest has been completed.